Hi, welcome back to my blog, Edis English Literature. I am Arjun Dude. Today we are going to read Hopkins' few of the religious texts or religious poems. We are going to read three beautiful sonnets. Thou art indeed just Lord, Pied Beauty, and God's Candor. Hopkins is a notable Victorian poet, the Jesuit poet, who is remarkably original. And his verses are three verses with a disciplined category. Uh, the lines he composes are typically Hopkins' own with a conventional metrical fold. But it has an irregular arrangement of traced and untraced syllables uh, that is called sprung rhythm. And uh, the rhythm of the common speech that Hopkins has often claimed that he has tried to speak with the God with the voices of common man. So he has articulated the words of simple people or the voices of the common mass or the common prayer as a medium of his poetry. The conventional poetic diction uh, that is the language of high, language of uh, epithet or all such uh, deep connotations of or the heavier words are skipped by Hopkins because his current language uh, that he tried to heighten is the original voices of the common people, not that elevated one. So, the in judging the modern poetry, uh, Hopkins' poetry in that sense, modern too, as uh, he has used a pre verse that has been pivotal point of discussion in later half of the poetry. So, Hopkins' poetry is at once religious uh, in matter of its versification. It has the beauty of articulating simple word with the heavier of meanings. And his is the poetry that has um, also used free verse. And the verse uh, or the pattern of these voice is really suited in conversational tone. So, uh, such kind of poetry was not being written beforehand uh, except a few of the um, exceptions. So, Hopkins this kind of poetry um, is an epical one and a new beginning. Hopkins poetry as perhaps in the work of other poets we can distinguish uh, the categories by which his texts are designed. Uh, first of all, the poetry which is a direct expression of religious beliefs and uh, his is a kind of another sort of poetry uh, that are not such with um, relationship with God, no direct or casual relationship has been stated here. There is a third category of poetry in him which is uh, not so much the expression of beliefs in the strict sense but more precisely on the doubt. So, there are three categories of poems uh, that we will find out in Hopkins' poetry. Like that of other religious poets, Hopkins' poetry uh, can be taken uh, a little bit complex uh, in his articulation of or the complexity uh, with which he is dealing with. So, Hopkins' life and his poems cannot be separated at all. The poetic force that comes from the very awareness of the objective beauty of the world, the awareness of the sensualism, uh, as all these things uh, sufficiently reveal the original uh, melody or the original metaphor that uh, Hopkins has tried to cover in his poems. Uh, the original metaphor that we are talking about uh, is indeed um, a kind of a, a gloom 
an awful anguish of the poet uh, for which he is finding for um, at the one end there is god and the other end the worldly life and uh, his uh, sweet lifestyle so in everywhere uh, there is a tug of war uh, he is like that of a rat boiling on the cauldron of life so the sonnet uh, that we will cover is a complete uh, sensation of gloom have a, that revelation have that revelation of the personality or uh, the sensibility and the belief uh, that are within uh, hopkins heart uh, can be told uh, the accents uh, that are uh, pending in his life or the works he is yet to do yet to accomplish in his life uh, also pops up in these poems in these sonnets so hopkins poetry in a nutshell is a replica of his persona in which uh, one cannot understand a single line without understanding hopkins dilemma uh, while being a priest how he suffers with the agonies of the worldly desires and the aspects of spiritual supremacy the sonnet thou art indeed just lord is a prayer and debate with god on the question of god's justness hopkins presents two sets of antithesis one between good people and bad people and the other between fecundity and aridity the poem opens with a poet's arriving at the resolution the god is basically just and that he understands the futility of arguing his justice but before we will first discuss the epigraph or the preamble of the poem that is of latin text the title comes the word indeed just lord that title comes from the latin quotation which is from the vulgate version of old testament jerima and the translation it goes um, the very content of the poem uh, is like uh, the very translation of that verse or poet's own rendering of that translation it says thou art indeed just lord o lord if i contend with thee yet i would plead my case before thee why does the way of sinners prosper the persons who are having sinful life is uh, prospering in material way so the question is quite evident alas haxle has praised the poems of hopkins as like that of a, a rightful argument towards poet why the universe is invested with such kind of justice where culprits are prospering in every way whereas the good people are driving away uh, from the scene of the from the blessings of god why the material prosperity as well as um, the heavenly bliss these two things these two uh, tormenting aspects are boiling in hopkins heart um, the life of a jesuit the total dedication to god has earned him pains toils and uh, so called people who are devoid from the path of god is enjoying their life so these are the basic argument these are the basic um, call or rather protest to god the similar kind of protest you can find out in the poem caller after so many of the utterances of the protest when the father of the lord of life has just a simple call a child he instantly replied my lord my father so the protest is rather an emotional one and the tail or the bitter importance uh, a kind of a, a big for justice from the god but he never loses his faith in christ as lord of life and that is the basic 
thou art indeed just lord if i contend with thee but sir so what i plead is just he says that you are indeed just lord i have no argument regarding that that god you are just but if i make a syllogistic argument with you that the argument is quite convincing one and justifying one he put forward his argument further why do sinners ways prosper and why must disappointment all i endeavor in two question pops up in his mind the sinners have their own ways of devil own ways of injustice but in materialistic world they are prospering inch by inch and why must disappointment all i endeavor in whatever i venture out be it in personal life be it in poetic caliber be it in my philosophical understanding everywhere there is an end way in my uh, life but thou my enemy o oh, thou my friend even if my god you are my friend even if you are my enemy how dost thou ours i wonder then thou dost defeat taught me if you were my enemy what would have been ours than that of the situation that i presently run through what kind of defeat it should have been met by me as the case is presently with me i am already defeated dejected destroyed and that kind of punishment i have already passing through as like that of a punishment given by enemy but you are no, not my enemy you are my friend how can you do this oh the sorts and thralls of last do in spare hours more thrive than i that spend sir life upon thy cause so uh, the poet hopkins is complaining to his master the disciple being a disciple he is just questioning the justness of the god that said like that of his principle of life the lord of life said i do spend the whole cause of my life the whole cause of my living with the feelings with the philosophy of yours love care friendship philosophy and an eternal cause of living with universe but sir the powers that are thriving throughout the world the very opposite of yours the thralls of last the sorts and thralls of last that means the persons who are living after sensual desires who are much way deviated from your path of divinity is making much fruitful desires fulfilled in their long run of living whereas in parallel my life is ruined or destroyed because i am derived i am devoid of any physical mart any um, spiritual joy as well as any creative birth even he complains to the very uh, variegated beauty that he describes uh, the natural landscapes in front of him which is uh, the creation of the god the sea banks and breaks now lived how thick laced they are again with fretty chair feel look and fresh wind shakes them birds build but not i build no no strain times enough and not breed one walk that wakes so the poet is complaining that the entirety of the uh, natural landscape that are in front of him is um, variegated with its beautiful natural descriptions its picture setting they are all in the beauty of the nature the banks and breaks those sea, those river banks those bushes nearby they are 
green they are green greenery with leaves and they are variegated colors with such designs and they are uh, such a uh, variegated beauty that compound word that is uh, newly compound words that he uses for the cherubim look phrase wind shakes them so the wind is blowing only to make it more alive even the birds another natural phenomena they are building nests the poet is here referring to the his own personal life that if birds are capable of making nests making their own families why he being a, a complete uh, disciple of him a runner of his principles and theories is failed to build a nest personal uh, life of uh, creativity is barred the obstacles are there why so the time passes by and he becomes an inach unproductive not yielding any fruitful results by the way of time so time has uh, ruined his possibility of any further progression in materialistic way as well as in spiritual way as well as in creative way not breed one work that works so apart from his personal work he says in its creative work he does not make any awakening work a fruitful a yielding work that will make the entire humanity or entire civilization into the um, acclaiming orthy or very appreciable works of his own so being a creative poet he has going to be a failure so he is complaining to his master as like that of in collar he is complaining to his master lord why are you making such a deviation from my success why you are not facilitating my success in the way of life as these pops up as everything and that is so complaining sums up the very last line as the poem begins in a colloquial argument initially abruptly it ends in a striking note in a very opposite the tone it says argumentative tone has been diminished in the last line when it says my no thou lot of life said my roots rain so many of the tagot so many of the, the divine poets of lalon the uh, prayer is there to the god to make plenty of rain so that there is progression there is germination there is fruitful yielding of results results in spirituality results in creative birth results in progression of civilization so similar prayer has been done so the complaining tone is diminished and prayer tone has been initiated as it says let my roots be filled with rain so that i can sprout new leaves i can grow up under the blessings of yours the argument and query is rounded up with a sincere prayer to god for salvation it is salvation being a priest he wishes to be united with the god with an amalgamated spirit he wishes he wishes to lead a life for salvaged not there is further toning down of the anguish towards the last few lines that we are just uh, referred to the chord the the tortured mind of his is at last soothed and uh, it turned into a serenity of prayer isn't it prayer mine o thou lord of life send my roots rain definitely the priest poet totally surrenders to god the rain definitely symbolizes a total regeneration leading to salvation does the sonnet that begins with a argument query with a colloquial 
um, speech it rounded up with a sincere prayer to god and that prayer is akin to the prayer of the caller when the lord says my child instantly the humble poet replied yes lord so the very last line is symbolically important uh, and it is striking too uh, as it leads towards a salvation as it uh, the very line leads the poem into a sincere prayer uh, to god uh, for salvation and that is the best way a priest can lead to god or pray to god in our second poem of hopkins pied beauty the variegated form that is the representation and uh, the designing of the god in its platform of nature is being exhibited here in this pied beauty the poet priest here exhibits a profound devotion to god the devotion in that sense that he says through his theory of inscape and in stress and that is uh, why the world is so variegated why the world is so uh, double colored why the world is so double designed the answer is god as the gods is the god is the answer of this design so let's pray god so these are the very theory of inscape and in stress hopkins tries to reconstruct his own vision of god in each fd and uh, um, variegated things that he uh, finds out in the universe as a priest and as a as an enthusiast of nature like that of an wordsworthian ecstasy he finds in him the very beautifully designed landscape the beauty that is of contrast here we can find out the kais of couple colored the brinded cow rose mole trout fees fire crawl and that of chestnut falls landscape plotted and pieced these are all words particularly coined to make the epithets of god he is the designer god is the designer the manifestation of god is its variegated beauty that we see in front of us god does not only create all these variegated objects in this earth and this universe of course he also makes present in all of this and that is the spiritual message that hopkin tries to deliver here that world is beautiful we just not clapping it that it is beautiful or appreciate it but we should rather appreciate the creator of it why the world is beautiful why this earth is beautiful because of god so let's pray god so hopkins emphatically declares that the supreme god is the origin of different antithetical objects in this earth sweet there are slow there are sweet there are sour there are dazzling there are dim there are counter originally there are everywhere there are some strange there are some simple so these are the adjectives that are not even sufficient to describe the god so let's begin our poem in a descriptive reading so hopkins says glory be to god for dappled things for skies of couple color as a brinded cow for rose moles all in stipple upon trout that swim fresh fire coal chestnut falls finches wings landscape plotted and pieced fold hello flow on all treads their gear and tackle and trip 
so the here entirety of this stanza first stanza is the very double paced beauty of the world that is the design of god and that's why it is the glorious representation of god as far as hopkins has said it the world is of dappled colors of dappled things that is it is all has been designed in such a way that is called variegated simply variety of things mingled and those variety of things are so double paced so double colored that it makes a beauty the cow the brinded cow the double colored cow whose design is so so beautifully attract us the spotted cow or red or white or black or white so many of the colors the rose moles the very spots that we can find out in new leaf sprout flowers in all steeple upon trout that swims even the dotted spots about the trout fish that are swimming so swift is the way of the trout and the trout's body is spotted so the moving beauty fresh fire coal chestnut falls chestnuts that are falling it is also a moving imagery like that of a fresh fire coal red in color even finches wings so the birds that are flying so everywhere even in the lot landscape plotted and pieced there are so many of the landscape where we can find out which are to be a fold or fallow or plow the plots and pieces that are of different colors some are barren some are just growing some herbs some are even to be plowed and to be uh, for cultivation even the people the people and its trades the person who are living in this civilization who are at work they are designing tools everything is of variegated beauty who is the creator of this variety god so let's praise god that is the message all things counter original spare strange so everywhere there is some differences that we see is the creator god the original who is the creator god the spare and strange that are different that are hardly seen is made of god whatever is fickle frickled so whatever is changeable whatever is spotted who knows how god knows the answer so god is the designer so as we cannot make such variegated things by ourselves let praise god with swift slow sweet sour agile dim so these are the contrasting aspects of our nature our life our feelings that are all created by god he fathers put those he fathers put whose beauty is past change <coughs> he fathers put whose beauty is past change so god is the father who creates all this beauty and the god who is the creator is beyond change because god makes the change but he remains unchangeable so as such is the design of the god as such is the great person god as such is the great creator the lord of life as such is the creator of the supreme power the priest says praise him praise him wholeheartedly and make to the way of divinity our third sonnet that we are going to discuss is hopkins god's canjar here the poet is making an appeal to the universe 
if not a prayer to himself a prayer that is resounding in his own heart to make a way that lead to the salvanized person the priest reborn as a close comrade of god so the poem can be read as a self searching as well as a message to the entire world that the poet is aware that who created this beautiful earth everywhere if we have an eye can see the reflection of the god and that reflection is so intense that uh, it cannot be and um, un remain unseen by us so the poet is quite uh, surprised to see that why if he can see the reflection of the god why these people they are living in front of him are so ignorant about it or the victorian people or the industrialized people that are running after the money the physical prosperity the materialistic prosperity are going afar from the divinity of god if not why the man is so indifferent the beauty the beauty of the nature is in front of us and the beauty is constantly renewing constantly reborning giving a new facet of understanding and that beauty is renewed and reborn because god permits it because god continues his own representation through these changes so everywhere there is a change that is the manifestation of god so let's see what the text of the poem says the world is charged with the ganger of god it will flame out like shining from sook fire the metal piece that is shining by the flame by the very ray of the sun as it sook as it tremble it sparkle into a flame so dazzling so appreciating and that is the ganger of god as the shining brightness of that shaking metal foil that is like that of a flame it readily gathers to a greatness like the oge of oil crust when the oil sheet has crushed in the machine and the oil are oging initially it start slowly later it speed up similarly if there is a ganger of god if you appreciate at the very fast you will see a little one gradually it will increase everywhere there is a beauty and ganger of god so through beautiful metaphor it explains how ganger or how great the god's representation of this world is and how beautiful it is why do men then now not wreck his rod generations have trod have trod have trod why these people are so ignorant about his own why these generations are so ignorant about this god's design why he, they have failed to understand the very resounding power or the magic wand of the universal lord the god of life generations have trod have trod have trod generations after generations the people in front of him are so ignorant about the beauty of the god all is seared with trade bleared and smeared with toil everybody is like that of crossing under the industrial wheels 
they are busy with their different trades they are soiling themselves and they are hard hardly working they are working hard toiling their utmost only for physical math only for material prosperity they are ignorant about the presence of the god and they are not having an inch forward in search of god and we are and we are man's march shares man's mail and soil in bear now nor can food fail being sowed so all of these people like that of they are not touching the soil as they are wearing shoes similarly feeling of the god needs to be hardly touch that they don't have they are all busy in their own trades in their own affairs in the sestet part the poem continues with a volta with a change of thought as for all these nature is never spent there is time god's candle is not going to end the beauty of the nature is ever renewed it is never spent the lives the dearest freshness deep down things and though the last lights of the black west went there are the possibility of the destruction and the until that destruction until until the complete devastation as it can be designed and for all this nature is never spent nature is ever renewed it is it is never going to end soon there lives the dearest freshness deep down things if you have the eye you can see the beauty hidden in every part of the object and though the last lights of the black west wind o oh morning at the brown brink is toward springs if there is evening if there is black night definitely there is a beautiful morning out because the holy ghost over the bent world broods with one breast and a bright wings so the reference of the holy ghost the biblical reference it says the entire world is being protected by the holy ghost holy spirit and that is its golden wings is covering the entire world so the world is being protected and we are all protected by the grandeur of god let's appreciate it and make a way to the divinity to the better understanding of this nature and to a better understanding of the god and it is a self searching goal for salvation for understanding the supremacy of the lord of our life so we have just completed reading uh, the three sonnets together hopkins these three sonnets create an atmosphere of spirituality and a better understanding of hopkins the man hopkins the poet obviously hopkins the man and hopkins the poet and hopkins the priest and even hopkins the family in are inspirable and the father son duo as he has been imbibed much of his spiritual writing from his father and uh, the better way of his understanding of the society and his divinity as his personal feelings towards god these all things make a person that is called hopkins i think uh, you have just uh, tried to understand these poems and um, you can ask me any of the questions if pop up uh, while reading all these sonnets i will give my answers and uh, by this way uh, we can appreciate the whole of these three poems in a new way i hope uh, you would comment and ask me questions and i will try my best to answer you so like share comment thank you bye bye